Millions of Americans take low-dose aspirin to reduce their risk of heart attack and stroke. Aspirin is a drug called an NSAID for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. NSAIDs may cause side effects because they reduce the body's protection from stomach acid. NSAIDs have a range of gastrointestinal side effects ranging from uh, mild levels of symptoms such as uh, um, stomach discomfort, um, nausea, um, to more severe abdominal pain, to more concerning uh, side effects such as ulcers, um, gastrointestinal bleeding, or perforation, and a perforation being a hole in the stomach that could be caused by an NSAID. Unless a person has a history of gastrointestinal problems, the risk posed by low-dose aspirin is small. It, it's quite low so that we don't uh, certainly um, limit ourselves in any way from prescribing it if somebody does not have an overt history of having had problems in the past. But what about when a person needs another NSAID, such as ibuprofen or naproxen for pain relief, or to fight inflammation in addition to their low-dose aspirin? Right. One of the risk factors for developing a complication of NSAIDs is to take more than one NSAID at the same time. Well, aspirin is an NSAID, so if you're taking another NSAID at the same time, you are at increased risk for developing an ulcer complication. When an individual combines low-dose aspirin along with the NSAID, the risk of having a gastrointestinal complication markedly increases. In fact, it increases about ninefold. The actual risk varies from person to person. The patients who are at risk for GI problems from NSAIDs include patients who've had previous peptic ulcer disease, complicated ulcers that have bleeding, requiring hospitalization, patients older age, patients who are taking steroids, blood thinners, and patients who are taking higher dosage of these drugs. There are steps people can take to lower GI risk. There are a couple of strategies that can be pursued for the person who needs to take a chronic NSAID who also needs to take low-dose aspirin. One of the strategies would be to change the NSAID, to change the NSAID to a uh, different class of NSAIDs such as a COX-2 inhibitor. COX-2 selective NSAIDs do not interfere with low-dose aspirin's cardioprotective effects, but there is still a GI risk. Another strategy for reducing the gastrointestinal risk of people who are required to take NSAID along with aspirin would be to take this class of medicines, this acid blocker class of medicine, the proton pump inhibitors, along with the NSAID plus the low-dose aspirin to reduce the likelihood of a gastrointestinal complication. Another strategy would be to switch to acetaminophen. But ask your doctor if you should take a proton pump inhibitor or switch to acetaminophen because these medications also have risks. Patients and their doctors must also consider non-GI side effects from NSAIDs. While low-dose aspirin reduces cardiovascular risk, doctors have learned that the other NSAIDs may actually increase that risk. Aspirin, which is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, has actually been shown to protect your heart. Now, in contrast to that protective effect of aspirin, a number of the other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs may increase your risk for developing a heart attack. And that many people find confusing. We physicians find it a bit confusing as well. At recommended doses, doctors say the cardiovascular risk of NSAIDs is very low. But caution is appropriate as all NSAIDs, including the COX-2 drugs, may increase your cardiovascular risk. We really don't have a way to predict with accuracy who's at risk and how much increased risk will exist if they take an NSAID in the heart or in the circulation. And consequently, we, we again have to invoke the same rule, which is that if you need the medication, you should take it, but ideally you should be able to take it at the lowest feasible dose to get the benefit of the medication to minimize the risk to the heart. Patients should talk with their doctors about the choice of NSAID. Some may be tolerated better than others. Doctors can help patients evaluate the benefits and risks of NSAIDs, especially when a patient is also taking low-dose aspirin. They're very efficacious at doing what they're designed to do, which is to reduce inflammation and reduce pain. And inflammation plays a role in so many disease states, and so many patients need the benefit of this kind of anti-inflammatory um, effect, and they get it at, at, at a very low cost in terms of the downside. But having said all of that, it's always prudent to think about is this the right case to do it? And what's the smallest effective dose and the smallest time frame in which I can get away with using it and thereby maximize the benefit and minimize the risk? 
we don't want to alarm the patients excessively about these risks to the extent that they don't take the medicines as they need it for controlling their pain, controlling their inflammation, controlling their arthritis. But at the same time, they need to, to be aware of the risk. And so what we're trying to do is strike a balance between the benefits and the risk.